All right. I think we're online and we already have people joining. So everybody who is joining now, please quickly write where you're joining from. So hello to everybody. I already see some, some names that I know. Hello, Bronya. How are you? All right. So I have five awesome online creators here. Until we have everybody joining, let's do another round of where you're actually, where you're currently stationed at. And I'm just going to, for everything that I do, I'm going to go clockwise. And I'm going to start for me. I guess for everybody else, it looks different. So we have, all right, we have people from Dusseldorf, Spain, Lincoln, UK. So Alina, where are you currently uh, staying at? Awesome. Hello, everybody. I am joining you all from Mexico, from Merida in Mexico. Nice. Anybody from Mexico here? And Minu, where are you currently? I'm staying? in the UK. UK. I already saw some face, uh, some people from the UK. Great. Yes. And Joel, where are you? Uh, so I'm French, but right now I'm in Georgia, in Batumi. In Georgia. Anybody from Georgia here right now? Hi from Mexico. <laughs> there is one person from Mexico. All right. Nice. And Jeanne. Well, I'm French too, and I'm living near to Paris now. All right. Anybody nice. joining from <laughs> France? I think I saw yeah, someone. Yeah, so someone from Strasbourg. Strasbourg, yeah. yeah. We have That's where I'm from. Ah, <laughs> nice. I don't know. And I'm wrong. from Colmar, <laughs> just in the south. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. It's 10 <laughs> minutes from my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Cool. And we just have Steve joining. Steve, where are you currently at? I'm in Palm Springs, actually, Indio, California. And I apologize for being late, but with the time change here, I thought it was an hour later. <laughs> I just no have to my computer to check something else, and there was a message just saying, Where are you? Oops. <laughs> just on time. Anybody from the US? Anybody or anybody who is in the US right now, write it in the chat. And we continue with Martin. Hello, everyone. I'm from uh, Stockholm, Sweden, and representing the Nordics. I saw one person in the chat, Lena from Denmark. Denmark Hello. Yes. All right, nice. So let's get started. And um, yeah, welcome to the content creator panel at Expo Lingua Online. And I have six wonderful online content creators with me at this moment. My name is uh, Gabriel Gelman, and I'm the founder of the German language learning blog and YouTube channel Sprachheit. And I also run the language learning company Spring Languages, where we also have several YouTube channels and for different languages and where we teach with a method called chunking. And now I'm going to go clockwise again, and uh, you can introduce yourselves uh, each one again, and um, just let everybody know uh, what your uh, the name of your channel is and when you started it, and what your channel is best known for. So let's start with Minu. Hi everyone, I'm Minu. The name of my channel is AngloLink, and uh, probably uh, the most famous thing about it is my YouTube channel where I teach uh, English. I have about 100 and maybe 20 videos on my YouTube channel. I also have an online course um, where I've taken my YouTube channel lessons and then put them into a very clear structure with additional exercises. That's at anglolink.com. And I'm originally from Iran, I'm Iranian, but I have lived and taught English in the UK for a very long time. So very glad to be here meeting you all. Thank you, Gabriel. Great, welcome, Minu. All right, and Joel, what about you? All right, so I'm mostly on Instagram. I teach French on Instagram. So, well, pretty fun and cool content, nothing uh, too grammatical. Um, my channel is called no one is allowed to love uh, French with handsome. And I also well, help students with online courses. Great. And Steve? So <clears throat> I have a, first of all, uh, I'm uh, from Canada, but I'm currently in Palm Springs, California, where the sun shines where, uh, while it's raining in Vancouver. Um, I have a uh, YouTube channel called Lingo Steve where I mostly speak in English and encourage people to learn languages, uh, but also do either speak, you know, monologues in other languages or have interviews with other people like Jean uh, in other languages. Um, when it comes to content, um, I think content is key to language learning. 
Um, we have, uh, oh, and I also am co-founder with my son, Mark, of a language learning platform called Link. One of the things we did there was create what we call mini stories, which are these point of view stories with what we call circling questions, where you get a lot of repetition, which helps get people started. Of course, at the other end of the spectrum, there are, you know, Netflix and, and other authentic content items. But people like many of you here who create intermediate content, I think you're very, very important. And we can get into that, uh, how we as a community or other people generate more and more content at different levels to help learners. Great. Thanks, Steve. We had an interview too, like six years ago in German. I think you were one of the first interviewees on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Nice. All right. So, Jeanne. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I'm. Um, I started actually with a, 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 a YouTube channel to learn uh, German for French people, French-speaking people. Um, so that's my my biggest uh, channel. I have uh, over uh, seventy thousand uh, um, subscribers, and so that was my my first uh, job <laughs> to to help French people learn in German. And since one uh, what one year, I started uh, actually the same thing, but just uh, other um, umgekehrt <laughs> um, um, to to help German people or German speaking people learning French. So that name is uh, einfach Französisch, which is uh, really for German speaking people. And uh, I start I I, I I try to help them learning French on the easy way. Um, and my aim uh, in all of this is to, to help French and German people uh, meeting each other. So we have uh, online course, actually not um, for the moment only to learn German, but uh, it will be in the next month, our next project to, to have a French uh, learning course. Um, and we already have some meetings online from French and German people so they can speak with, uh, with each other and build tandem groups and uh, stuff like this. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, almost, yeah. <laughs> Great. Great. Thank you. And Martin? Well, I'm one of those old school YouTubers who started in, back in 2006 originally and just uh, found a community and kind of found my stride when I uploaded a video. I, I almost apologized because it was nothing I had done before where I, I, I made a video, 10 Swedish words that do not exist in the English language. And back then, Facebook and YouTube were kind of friends. So it just kind of, it really blew up. Uh, it had, I think, over 1,500 shares on Facebook, which back then was a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I came to this weird conclusion that, hmm, so this is something I like to do, and this is something that they'd like to see. What should I do with that information? <laughs> uh, and it's been YouTube pretty much ever since, although I did found a new love on Instagram with the Swedish language, which is more, you can do more instant fun stuff there, whereas YouTube, you have to kind of plan out. It, it becomes more of a bigger project. But uh, yeah, it's fun to mix uh, mix. Uh, language and culture and see what how what I do can bridge to other people in other countries because this is not not just me offering myself and my pretty face this is also me getting to know people from around the world which gives me a lot of energy and and satisfaction on in my life nice thanks very much and Lena Awesome. Yeah, you know, my story is a little bit similar to yours, Martin, because I started my channel, it was originally called The Busy Linguist in 2016. And it started when I was at law school in Australia. So I was born in Latvia, I grew up in Australia with a Hispanic father. So I had that influence in my life. And I remember a friend of mine said to me, you know, Lena, you speak all these languages, you should really do something with this. And I thought, okay, so I made one video, you know, with a small digital camera, had no idea about filming, no idea about editing at the time. And I just made a video of me speaking, you know, in seven languages. I was super nervous. It was not the best video, but we all start somewhere, right? And it just took off as well. Overnight, I think I gained about 450 followers or something at the time. And I remember waking up the next day, getting ready for a lecture. I thought, oh, I could really do something. 
So that has really been my primary job ever since then. Um, you can find me on YouTube, which is now called LVL Holistic Learning. So I think my kind of how the, the career has developed has very much been in alignment with how I personally have grown and also kind of what I teach. So it's it started with, you know, just making random videos in different languages to now really the, the core element of what I do is and why it's called holistic language learning, which I run with my partner now as well, is we really uh, take language learning to a deeper level and look at it holistically from the aspect of how can you learn with meditation, for example, using journaling and really looking at the deeper elements of personal development in alignment with you know, the fun side of teaching and learning languages and kind of living a global life. So yeah, I do that on Instagram and on YouTube as well. Great, hey, thanks. Yeah, actually, you already started to partially answer my first question, but maybe we can go more into detail about that. So it's funny, I, I think like a while ago, I read a, 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 um, a survey of what young people want to want to become and like YouTuber or Instagrammer was somewhere at the very top. Um, and I think that's something that is happening with a lot of people it's like also TikTok because it's really easy to get into that. Um, but not a lot of people stick around. So you've all been doing this for years. So why, why did you decide to become uh, an online content creator? And how did it all start? So maybe we can all go a bit more into that. And uh, yeah, let's continue with Minu. <laughs> okay, my story is a bit strange because I've been an English teacher for about 40 years. And um, my main work was doing residential courses. But when my son reached the age of 18, he decided that uh, I should probably <laughs> branch out and do something on YouTube. So I became his pet project. So he encouraged me to um, teach online. And just like uh, Lena and Martin said, the first video was a complete disaster. I was like, you can't put this online. This is embarrassing. <laughs> he agreed with me. So he went and uh, kind of developed um, a very cool platform where I could uh, present my lessons. That's, that's how I started at the age of probably 46, becoming a YouTuber. That's about 10 years ago. Actually, that makes it 48 years ago, at 48, age of 48, 10 years ago. So there we are, probably I'm one of the oldest YouTubers, but I've got a very young son behind me. <laughs> so that's my story. All right, let, we will see if Steve will share his age and we'll see who wins the battle of the oldest YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's continue with Joel for now. In my case, um, well, I've been traveling for 10 years, uh, living a bit everywhere. And often people will ask me some French words and to help them with their French. And after a while, I decided to start it on Instagram just to help, help out some friends around. And little by little, I started to take off. And at one point you realize it's amazing. You have a, you know, a big community around you. You're actually helping people from all around the world and that's really fulfilling and yeah and you just keep working and keep creating content for your followers that you they tell you what you want and you keep creating for them and it's naturally growing i guess when you really love it and on one point you realize you can make a living from it which is which is amazing yeah Great, thanks very much. And Steve? Uh, first of all, when it comes to uh, age, I think I'm the uh, <laughs> 76. But I started about, uh, gosh, I don't know, 13, 14 years ago. And uh, it's just amazing how it gradually grows. Um, I don't create on my channel, sort of deliberately create learning content. Although when I speak in English, I try to speak clearly because a lot of the people who follow me are in fact working on their English. And uh, all of those lessons are available at link if people want to read what I had to say. And um, when I speak in other languages, um, again, I think some, we do try to provide the, uh, you know, the subtitles so people can follow. Um, but I'm also, I would say, uh, to some extent, a sort of an instigator, a catalyst for content. So just looking at Minu, I have a lady in Iran whom I found on the internet 
who has created tremendous content for, for Link. She has a 26 episode series on the history of Iran. Uh, each episode then is followed by questions about that episode. She's done uh, courses on uh, carpets, food, minorities in Iran. And of course, I, she's also my tutor. So um, this is, of course, what's so attractive about learning languages. We learn about a country, the history. We get interested in history. She lives in Gilan, which is in northern Iran. And our image of Iran is this desert scape, whereas uh, up there, it's very green <laughs> and uh, wet. And, and so it's, it's just part of the whole fun. And I think all of us try to incorporate in our our language, uh, whatever we do, whatever the platform is, some sense of the underlying history, culture, food, you name it. And so it is a fun thing. I think I, I echo what other people said. It's a great way to connect with people around things of interest. And there's nothing more fun in life than being together with other people with whom we share interests. And, and that's just sheer enjoyment. So my involvement on YouTube has certainly been very enjoyable. Great. Thanks very much. And Jan. Um, well, I started everything on YouTube uh, in 2018. Um, before that, I was a, a teacher. Actually, I'm all, um, always a teacher, but not working anymore uh, in, in schools in France. Um, I, I studied in, in Germany and in France, and I, I worked for a few years in, in Germany as a German teacher uh, at primary school, and then I went to France back and worked there. And then uh, I came to the point where I... I, I so um, I don't want to do that my whole life. <laughs> I, I love my job, but I wanted to try something else. And uh, so I had this idea to, to, to reach more people online and to, to reach people who wants to learn German. And maybe you know, maybe not, but German hasn't the best um, reputation in France. Everybody thinks it's difficult and it's not nice and it's everything like that. And uh, when I brought uh, French friends of me um, to Germany, I show them the, the culture, the, the food, the, the, and I try, always try to, to, to break this, um, uh, this um, how do you say that, um, um, cliches, yeah, is this in English too? Um, so, so I always want to, to, to try to do that. So, so now I'm happy to do that online um, and to reach uh, more people and to help people learning German and have fun with that. It uh, sounds difficult at the beginning, but you can do it. <laughs> so um, yes, that's how I started everything. And a lot of uh, German friends of me uh, told me, oh, could you please help us learn French? And, and I said, no, I just want to teach German. Uh, I don't want to teach French. But uh, yes, after, uh, after two years, I um, started this French learning channel and I'm happy about it because I can now help uh, people from both countries um, speak with, another, with each other. And I think that's the most important uh, thing when you learn a language, you have to, to have people to uh, speak with them. And it's um, a big difficulty from French people to find German people and otherwise. So I'm happy now to, to, to do this and to, to help in my small way. <laughs> Great, and I think Martin, you have the most seniority here with starting in 2006. So you already mentioned a bit about how you started, but maybe you can go a bit more into that and also tell how the space looked back then. Oh, uh, back back then, uh, I became a YouTube partner uh, in, uh, let's say, 2000, that was 2010 when they released it in Sweden. And back then, uh, on the front page, uh, you would have these free videos on the right. And every two times that I refreshed, one of my videos would pop up. So that was a pretty sweet time to be a YouTuber because uh, you obviously got a lot of views. But I would say, I mean, I've already told you how I started, but back in the 90s, uh, I had this, this idea that the internet would be this way for us to connect to each other in, in, beyond the use of media and our political leaders. And we would get to know each other, we would become friends. And learning languages is sort of that bridge. Uh, and, and one of the best examples I have of that is, so my little brother is not the most educated person in the world, but he started dating a Polish girl. And when we went to uh, the baptism of their daughter in Poland last year, and he sits over there 
and speaks Polish with grandma. That was just one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Um, so, you know, getting people and being a supplier of people's needs when it comes to, um, for, my, for me, learning Swedish is just a cool thing. It's like I'm sitting on this, this, this mountain of knowledge just because I happen to grow up, grow up here, but then I'm also utilizing my YouTube skills uh, to make it, you know, fun and interesting uh, to, you know, absorb. So um, it's a, it's a cool, I give you something, you give me something and the world will be at peace at some time. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I have a very similar story. I also learned Polish for that same reason. Also talking Polish to the grandma just a few days ago. So uh, yeah. And Lina, what about you? You already oh, mentioned Babcha. Uh, your... Babcha, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You already mentioned uh, your origin story with the busy linguist. So either you can continue with that or, or speak about your transformation, whatever, whatever you prefer. Yeah, I think the point that I'd love to touch on is kind of how the, well, the whole, I, I want to say the channel, but it's kind of the channels and the business grew is because kind of, what really inspired me to keep going was exactly that, the connection that I found from collaborating both with other YouTubers who would always inspire you in new ideas and kind of new insights, but also from the people that you connect with. I mean, it's so amazing that we can be sitting here and have, you know, I think 95 people from all over the world watching us. And it's kind of the same thing where sometimes I'll look through my YouTube comments even now and think, wow, this person just watched the video I made in 2016 and it's inspiring them and it, it got them to, you know, I, I've had so many people message me and say, you know, you changed my life just by watching this one video that I saw of you to either inspire to learn a new language or to not give up on learning a new language. Um, and I think the biggest thing is as well, like showing how similar we all are despite the differences, because I think one of the key things, you know, touching on, from what I do in the kind of personal development aspect is the topic of identity, which is huge for a lot of people. And, you know, when you're learning a new language, as we know, it's kind of your identity really comes and plays a big part in it. Either you feel like you lose a part of yourself or you're discovering a new part of yourself. And so I think it's, it's really exciting to show kind of that we're all just human beings, you know, just because you can, you know, you grew up in a place or so you're more advanced in a language, showing also like the the mistakes that you make or the new experiences you have I think it reminds us all of how interconnected we are so that's kind of been the way that my journey has developed and what's also kept me going to create content is that constant inspiration and connection to to the rest of the world and something bigger. Thanks Lina yeah it reminds me of the video that we did together a few years ago in Berlin. Yeah, I remember I remember yeah, and you actually touched upon a topic that I also wanted to cover today, which is to actually keep going because um, some of you had, uh, let's say, call, uh, let's call it being lucky, like having the first video blow up and gather 450 subscribers. That's not very common. Most people sit at below 100 subscribers for weeks or months or, or even years. And that makes it really difficult to keep going. And, and uh, you already touched a bit on the topic. Lena, but I would like also hear it from the others. What motivated you to, to keep going even though it sometimes or, or a lot of the times is hard? So what kept you motivated to, to just continue doing what you're doing? Minu, Minu? Yeah, I think it's very much what Lena says. It's just even those few comments that say, oh, this has really been helpful. Please don't stop. Or when I did stop for a while and there were these comments, where are you? We need you. So uh, and then you think, oh, I'm now because I'm not getting all those views I used to get, I'm letting people down. So that was uh, like, no, can't do this. Even if uh, just a few thousand people enjoy this video or benefit from it, I've, I, I must do it. And it, it, it's just that, like Lina was saying, the, the connection is, is so important. And I don't think um, you can get this much gratitude uh, from any other job or this much reward from any other job. 
and people from all over the world saying thank you, saying um, we appreciate your hard work. You can't get that from any employer, <laughs> but uh, no matter how wonderful they are. So I think that's what's really motivating is the connection. And what Martin was saying, it's the feeling of you're providing a valuable service to, to the whole world. So that's, uh, that's for me the main thing that keeps me going anyway. Cool, cool. And Joel? I guess I have the pretty much story, the same story here. Um, I'm focused on Instagram, which is harder than YouTube in a way that you have to post daily, uh, pretty much daily. Yeah, you cannot, you know, like just stop for two weeks. And if you try, your community gonna let you know. And yeah, you don't want you want them to keep learning. And the some for them it's hard sometimes not to. Uh, it's easy to want to learn a language for a few days, few weeks, but for to keep learning consistency, it's hard for them too. So you want you have to do this for them. And sometimes they're just going to remind you, like, I used to have a newsletter and I thought, well, who will really read my newsletter, right? Sometimes you try something and then suddenly, well, you don't write one for a week and you say, well, no one will notice. But no, you have emails from many uh, people saying, what's going on? They must have a problem. I couldn't have your newsletter. Please, can you send it to me? And when you have this feeling, those people waiting for your content because they actually learning from something from it that's yeah this is pushing you up even every time i was tired sick <laughs> busy uh yeah i kept trying and until now i'm still there and hopefully it will be here for a while all right and steve what about you okay so um yeah uh First of all, just before I answer that, I think the whole issue of content is so important in language learning. In order to learn a language, we have to stay with it. You can't learn overnight. To stay with it, you need interesting content, more or less at your level. And we know there's an abundance of beginner material, mostly very boring. And there is, we can access the authentic material, but it's typically too difficult. And I think a lot of the content creators are trying to focus on that middle ground and, and doing a service. Uh, which is very important. And my channel uh, and my, the name of my channel, someone asked is Lingo Steve. And I try to inject enthusiasm and make language learning about discovery rather than performance or perfection. I mean, I'm on my 20th language and some of the ones that I've learned, I would have a lot of trouble speaking today. It doesn't matter. I enjoyed discovering them often in, in preparation for a trip to the country where I was able to use the language. I think language learning is part of, as maybe Lena said, discovering who we are as, as human beings. It needn't be a performance sport. Um, as to why I kept going with my uh, YouTube channel, Lingo Steve, I mean, it's been 15 whatever years, however many years, it's obviously related to my language learning platform, Link. And so I find that if people follow me on my YouTube channel and I explain my approach to language learning, which is more input-based, take it easy, don't worry about what you forget. Uh, then when people come to Link, they have a better sense of what Link is all about. So it's it's also part of you know driving traffic to and explaining how Link works. So that's why I keep going. Now, you might ask me, why did I keep going with a Link? That's another story, <laughs> but it's been a long road. So there you have it. All right, and Jean? Um, I think, well, actually, I, it's when, when you start a, a big project like something like this, and, and I, I really want it from the beginning to, to, to do it for a living. So you, you, it's like a, a little baby. So I already have two children, but now I, I have a third, third one with, uh, with my YouTube channels. And, and so you want it to grow, you want it to, 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 to be better, you want to, to, to invest in, um, time and, and energy in that. Um, and it's like it's like a game. I, I love playing and I love winning. So I, <laughs> that's that's kind of the stuff that make me uh, continue. And then of course everything was what the other said. The, the the thing that you you see, you can help people. You can reach off people. Um, and the people thank you for that. And and then for me, the the one of the biggest moments um, when. Um, was in uh, 2019 i made a um, um, 
a meeting in a weekend in, in Germany with French with a small group from uh, my French uh, German learning course. And we, we met for a weekend in, in Germany. We had um, uh, time workshops, time to, to speak with another, to do exercises. Uh, we we had we went to a concert. We we had a lot of uh, cultural things because I think language and culture uh, you can't just learn a language language with, without the culture. Um, and that was a big moment for me. I wanted to 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 do it again in 2020. You know I, why I can't put it. <laughs> so I, I hope to. Well, actually, I am planning a new uh, event in in January, and I hope I can do it. And I think that's. That's the, 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 maybe not my biggest aim, but it, it gives me a lot of energy to know I can meet the people I helped online. Uh, there are really people and that we can meet together. We have fun and we, yeah, that's, that's enormous. <laughs> Let's keep me going. Great, thank you very much. And uh, before we go to Martin, uh, we have a few questions here. Um, I'm not, I won't be able to ask them all to everybody. So whenever there is a question that, that you feel like answering, uh, answering uh, feel free to just pick it out and, and answer alongside. And yeah, with that being said, we can continue with Martin. And you, uh, with you, of course, going the longest, this is the most interesting uh, answer. Stop it. <laughs> uh, the thing is, actually, I'm one of the few, I guess, in this panel uh, who doesn't live off what I do on, on social media. Uh, but what, was, what Steve was pointing out for me is the, the whole part of personal growth is that, you know, my YouTube channel and now Instagram is sort of at the center of it all. And every, every job and every income I've had in the last 12 years comes from that hobby in the middle, even though the money doesn't come directly from there. It comes from other things that I've done through personal growth and because people have seen me and what I do online. I mean, I was a, I was a, Radio, state radio reporter for a year. I don't have a journalism uh, degree, but they said, you seem like it's kind of person who can ask interesting questions. And I'm like, all right. And then I was an influencer manager for four years. And now I work with, you know, the Swedish prime minister. Uh, who would have thought when I opened that YouTube channel 14, 15 years ago? But again, for me, and also what you were pointing at, Sean, um, meeting the people. Uh, sometimes I will get like a message on Instagram. I, I saw you today, but didn't dare to go up. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> and it's not an ego thing. It's more like, I, I really want to meet people that I interact with because, and I'm, you know, if they put me on a pedestal, I'm pretty quick at just putting myself down on my feet on the ground. Uh, because the energy I get from meeting people that have that, I have helped, I guess, their words, is just amazing. And I think that is the biggest drive for me. Because if it was just views and comments and likes, it would be very distant. But when you actually meet people and you become friends with them, it's, that, is, that is the best thing. What do you say, Lena? I'll, I'm taking over, Gabriel. What do you say, Lena? Amazing. No, I love that comment, Martin. And I think... You know, when it comes to kind of continuing with anything, I think there are there are always two elements when with motivation, right? There's the intrinsic motivation, which is the reason why we all probably started with our channels and platforms that there was something we really loved to do and we wanted to show it to the world. And then as you grow, of course, you're inevitably going to come to phases where you may be not as motivated. I've definitely had that. And there was a period last year where I really took a lot of time off of YouTube, um, which I think was actually necessary because I think from that, the biggest thing I realized was when it comes to creating and keeping going that A, it's a marathon. It's not about, you know, pushing out lots of content all at once, which I tried to do as well in the beginning. Um, but that's not going to last, just like with languages, right? You can go in and do a 24-hour session, but it's not going to really lead you anywhere. So the biggest tool that I can, I can really give anybody as well with keeping going is to attach to the input, but detach to the outcome. Because as soon as you are attached to the outcome, at least for me, that's where I found that I didn't, I wasn't enjoying what I was doing as much. And people also weren't really 
resonating with it. And even if they were, I still felt really empty from what I was creating in this space. And then I took a break and I started to, to really just think, well, what if I, I just went and created stuff that came to me that it was, you know, I knew that had helped me in the past on topics, for example, what if I could mix all my languages because I create content in, in multiple different languages. So I went and created, you know, meditations in, in German and English, in Portuguese and English. I started mixing up my content and I found as my enjoyment grew, also people resonated with it more. And, you know, we can, we can, I don't know what the explanation fully is for that, but I really have to say this concept of attaching myself to the input and detaching from the outcome has probably been the biggest thing that's helped me across multiple, multiple areas in my life. Great, and you covered again uh, a bit of the question I was going to ask now, which is um, besides the content that you're offering on your on your channels, online channels, what other courses, platforms, programs uh, do you offer or what what's the core of your business with what you help others to learn a language or whatever other service it is that that you give to the people? So Steve already mentioned link, but maybe everybody can mention a bit more about their what they're actually offering besides uh, their their language learning or their online content. And let's start with Minu. Uh, yes, as I said, so I, I have the YouTube channel with all the videos and uh, it is like uh, Steve says, it's very much geared towards the intermediate level. It's not for beginners. I would say A2 is where you can start watching my lessons. But um, then from there, I have created using those videos plus some other videos. And on my online platform, it's now a structured course that starts at A2 and goes all the one, all the way to C1. So it's grammar, pronunciation, conversation, vocabulary, the usual stuff for learning um, a language. But I've tried to make it very structured and as dynamic as possible. So there's voice recognition, there is uh, lots of exercises, online exercises, everything is recorded so people can download, listen, repeat. Um, so for, as far as I'm concerned, it's a very complete course starting at A1. And now I have also package that differently into a 90 day challenge or bootcamp course, because what I found is that people would start and then kind of fizzle out and just they didn't, they seem, some people seem to need a little bit of pressure on them and a very clear daily program. So now um, this is my new course, which I have included here uh, for the prize draw. It's called uh, Focused Listening Bootcamp. And the reason it's called Focused Listening because I find in my own experience as well, my own fluency in English, because as you know, I'm a non-native speaker, I have learned the language myself, really grew when my listening skills uh, developed. And uh, so uh, I was doing a, like I was transcribing a TV program for my teacher, for my English teacher. And within a month of doing this, it was really difficult to listen and write every word down. But within a month of doing this, uh, just my English transformed. So I'm basing my course uh, on my own experience of Listening is the key to speaking fluently. Um, and so that's, so that's what I do. Like everyone said, YouTube is where I, I connect with people, but it is not, the question has been asked several times. Uh, do, do I make a living off YouTube? Definitely not. Um, that has not happened for me at all, but it is, it's the channel to bring people who are interested, who like the way I teach, to my online course. That's the, the core of the business. Great, and that's the perfect cue for Steve, uh, learning a language through listening with his app Link, which is by the way, one of my favorite apps for learning a language. So Steve, if you can talk a bit more about that. Well, you know, I agree entirely with Minu. Uh, listening is, listening comprehension is, is the 
first skill you want to go towards. It's not being able to say something. It's not being able to conjugate verbs. It's being able to understand what people say. So listening comprehension is essential. You need to do a lot of listening. Fortunately, it's easy to do. You just carry your little MP3 player with you wherever you go. I also think reading is important, though, because I remember words better if I read them rather than just hearing them. But listening sort of gets your brain used to the language, gives you some momentum, some rhythm. Uh, and, um, you know, there's just so much content on the Internet today. If I compare like 30, 20 years ago, the universities you would spend thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars on language labs. And today you carry that around in the MP3 player and you can download it from anywhere on the Internet. Uh, the, the one thing that I think is unfortunate, there are so many podcasts in so many languages, but they're all without transcripts. So uh, I find that for my own learning in Arabic and Persian today, I have to grab, somehow try to get a hold of the MP3 file, put it on an automatic transcription service in order to get a text. So then I can import the audio and the text into Link and study it. It would be nice if there was some way that, that um, these podcasts, and, and literally on any subject, you could be Italian on the history, on politics, on growing things in your garden, cooking. It's, there's just so much stuff, but it's all without transcript. And if we listen to something and we only understand 10%, it's very frustrating. If you have the transcript, at least you have a chance of learning what's there. So maybe as we look to the future, maybe in this whole area of content creation, aside from what is done for intermediate learners, or for beginner learners with more sort of repetition, which is what we need at the beginning, which unfortunately most beginner courses don't do. Uh, but even so that we can, you know, at an earlier stage in our learning, start to access genuinely interesting stuff because that's going to keep us going, but that's going to require transcripts. So I don't know if the community has any ideas on how we can get more of these podcasts transcribed. I don't know if I answered your question, but I wanted to make that point. All right. And Joel, what about you? What do you offer besides your uh, free online language learning content? Um, well, I have a different methodology where I created courses for French beginners and I'm more like a natural learner. I learned languages through not at school. I wasn't good at learning uh, languages at school. It was too structured. Well, but when I, while I was traveling, that's when it happens. And I feel like, no, when you're a baby, you're learning while by the context, right? You need to, to tell some words to your parents. Then, and when you're traveling, it's the same way. You're gonna, well, maybe have a date with a, a lovely girl or lovely guy and you need to communicate with them. You're going to the supermarket. You need to manage to, to the your taxi driver. And that's how I build my courses in a more, well, each event requires a few words, and that's how we usually learn. And in the middle, we put some grammar without thinking about it. And within a couple of weeks, you start to know tenses, and you didn't even notice when you started to learn them. So I try to create something, well, an approach a bit different, a bit more natural for French beginners. Great. Right. And Jana. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I could just say the things, the, the same thing. <laughs> well, for the moment, I don't have the, the French learning course, uh, but I already um, planned it. I um, filmed the first, the only first video. <laughs> so it's coming in the next uh, week or uh, one. But for my German course, um, it's actually the, the same uh, methodology. I, I want um, to, to help people to uh, be able to, to say what they want to say when, when they leave when they travel, when they speak with people. And um, so I don't start with the grammatic and with the maybe the things you first learn at school, but I start with the things you really need when you meet people, when you want to, to reach out to them, when you want to, to go to restaurants or whatever. whatever. So um, that the basic, the, the basics. And then, um, um, so I have, um, well, as I said, I don't have uh, an offer now to learn French, but it's coming. And if you want to, to uh, hear about it, you can uh, uh, subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, you can just go to uh, .com, um and find the links there on my YouTube videos uh, also. And uh, well, if you want to learn German, maybe you can just join uh, tomorrow because I will 
we'll speak more about that <laughs> tomorrow uh, in another uh, meeting of Expo Lingra. Thank you, and Martin. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know, having a small life crisis here since you asked a question because I don't have any products. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? What are you, what are you <laughs> what's wrong with you? Uh, but then I thought, you know what? I have, a, I have an offer. You come to Stockholm, you DM me on Instagram, we'll have lunch. I'll buy you lunch. That's my offer. And we'll have a good talk about life. I'll do better. I think that's the best deal of everyone so far. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, let's continue with Lena. I love that. A live session with Martin. What could be better than that? <laughs> yeah, so in terms of me, I have a couple of things out there. So as I mentioned, um, the business that I have is called LVL Holistic Learning. So we offer a holistic language learning programs in Spanish, German, English, and Portuguese, and they're all bilingual. So you could be, for example, a native Spanish speaker and want to learn English or German, or you could be a German native speaker and want to learn, let's say, Portuguese. Um, so we do it in a bilingual setting and really um, how it works is we do tap into not only, of course, you know, looking at your goals and what you want to learn, but also teaching you, you know, how to access your subconscious mind for language learning to empower that, to look at how your external and internal environments impact your learning, to even go into things that I think not many people have heard of, like how actually smell impacts your learning. So teaching not only the language, but simultaneously like immersing yourself in an environment that's gonna be conducive and in, to your learning and help you learn more effectively. Um, so that's the, the holistic language learning, the uh, holistic language coaching that I do, uh, which my partner and I have under the Holistic Learning Academy. Um, I also offer holistic teacher training, which is for language teachers who want to look at how to employ some of these different techniques and skills into their teaching environments, whether that be in courses or in their classrooms as well. And I actually also do social media um, consulting. So I'm working together with Babbel at the moment and with a Brazilian company also to look at how to expand their content to become more cross-culturally competent. So not just translating the words, but also translating the messages that you wanna share on a cultural level. So those are some of the things you can send me a message on Instagram or uh, on my email, which you'll find there as well. Well, thanks very much. So we ran out of time already, uh, but I have one last question and please use one sentence, everyone to answer this question so that we go, don't go too much over time, which is what is your number one advice for people that want to follow into your footsteps that also want to become online uh, content creators? And Minu. Mm, one sentence. Don't be shy, put yourself out there, but and be yourself. Nice, Steve. Uh, think of what uh, you would like to have as a language learner and try to offer that to your language learners, to your listeners. Joel? Don't think too much, just start right now and don't stop. Jeanne? Um, just be yourself because the people would love you as you are. Martin? Well, I live by this. Do good shit and good shit will happen. <laughs> and Lina? I would say share what inspires you and just go and do it. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for to the participants and thank you for uh, people that tuned in. And uh, yeah, uh, continue with Expo Lingua. They have big programs. This is the first one of these sessions. I think there's every day one of these sessions going on with other language creators. And uh, yeah, thanks very much. See you soon. Thanks so much. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Adios. Bye. Nice. Bye. Bedrood. Tschüss. Bis bald, Leute.